Okay, so the uh, most common question was, how did I get started making games? And then also, how do you get started making games? So I'll just kind of answer both of them at the same time. I started making games back in 2013, summer of 2013. It was completely on a whim. I was going to go to art school. I was really into art and studying art, and I was going to do, I want to make my own web comic and stuff. And then just the idea, I should try making a game just popped in my head and I tried it out. Um, I just started looking up different tutorials. I got an ad for unity and just, you know, started following tutorials after following tutorials for a little while. I realized code just kind of clicked for me. Like I was thinking of this sick idea for an MMO I wanted to make and it's super cool original combat system. And then I realized, hang on, I know how to do an animation for an attack. I know how to do an if statement. I know how to do a ray cast for an attack. I could just combine those in different ways to get the combat system I want. And then, then I started like looking out on my own at like trying my own thing and messing around. I'd watch tutorial and then kind of use it, adapt it to my own thing. So after doing that for, you know, a little while, I read this article by Derek Yu, I think the creator of Spelunky about finishing games and the importance of finishing games. And then I was hanging out on the Unity forums a lot and I saw all these people who couldn't finish games. They'd been making games for years and they're like, I just can't finish a game. What do I do? I need help. I'm um, just they they just couldn't do it they they just kept starting things and i became very determined to not be like that so i just like set myself a goal i was like all right i'm going to finish a game in one week and so unity had just released their free shadow directional shadows cuz back then unity didn't have all its features available for free users you had to buy premium if you wanted shadows in your game so they had just made directional shadows available for free users so i was like i'll make a game with shadows i was like okay i know how to do player movement i know how to do like put in 3d maps and stuff i know how to do a melee attack with a you know an animation and a raycast so i just kind of put together this simple game where you have to hunt down the guy who doesn't have a shadow right and they all look the same otherwise and then uh, that was shadowless and that was my first game it took me about two weeks to make I had, I had midterms and stuff. And so, yeah, and then, um, yeah, I just kept messing around with things. And I actually, after I made that, I came up with the idea for levitating guns and stuff, which would eventually become the AS Thou. And uh, I wasn't really good enough to make it at the time, but it was kind of the idea I had for my next game. And then I stopped making games for a while. It wasn't until, like, summer of 2014, I think RPG Maker held a contest, Indie Game Maker contest, and it was like a $10,000 reward. And I was like, I should participate in that because I could buy a new computer if I, you know, get $10,000, the eternal struggle of trying to buy a new computer. And then, um, so I got a copy of RPG Maker on the Humble Bundle for a couple bucks and then messed around with it. And I was like, well, I can do way more with Unity. So then I went back to Unity and I, I made like a clone of Tales Worth Adventure, this Flash game I liked. And then uh, that was that became Pact, a small game I made, and that kind of kickstarted me and got me back into making games. I didn't win anything. I don't know who won. I feel like I think there was like a whole scandal where they like never announced winners or something for like two years or something ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did. And then um, also at the same time, I was seeing Flappy Bird was getting really popular, and I was like, I bet I could do that, make lots of money, you know, making a mobile game. So I started coming up with my own idea for a mobile game and uh messing around with a little bit with that but then then i did the contest and then i got the idea uh, yeah just i kept making prototypes basically 2014 i just made a ton of small games and prototypes and i was like okay now i feel confident to make a full-length game and then i made intersection and then so on and so forth so how do you get started kind of following what i did is you know just watch tutorials for a bit then gradually mess around with doing your own thing while still watching the tutorials like okay i know how to do input i know how to do an attack maybe i make two kinds of attacks with different inputs you know you just kind of gradually get out of your comfort zone of just following the tutorial and doing exactly what they say while still following along generally with them um and then after you've done that for a bit kind of try to make your own prototype i have i have a few video i have a couple of videos I'll, I'll link here like how to they're pretty old, but they're pretty good information. So you can check those out, I guess, top left there. Oh, also, if you click the thing on the top left, it doesn't immediately take you to another video. I didn't know that for the longest time, so I would never click those. But yeah, it just opens like a playlist on the left. Why is your channel called Mrs. Is? Basically, back in 2005, I think, I was playing a lot of RuneScape, and 
I was making a new character and I came, spent a long time coming up with a cool name for it. And then I played for a bit and I died and lost all my starting stuff. And I was like, this is dumb. I'll just make a new character. And I was like 10, so I couldn't type very well. So I just hit the M key and the IZ keys a bunch of times. I was like, good enough. That's my character. And that became my main. Um, for the longest time, I didn't know how many IZs were in the name. There's four, by the way. Um, but I would just, whenever I went to log in, I would just guess and I'd type in, you know, okay, that seems right. And I'd log in and be like, that username doesn't exist. And I'd be like, okay, maybe it's about long. I'll take a couple off. And then username doesn't exist. And maybe it's a bit short. I'll add one more. And then one day I was like, maybe I should actually count how many there are so I can know when I try to sign in. Um, yeah, so that's the name. And I just kept using it. It's kind of cool to be able to look back and like just Google that name and then see like all my old cringe ass posts on like the Minecraft forums and stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's been, I don't know, it just kind of randomly became my name, my online username. How long did it take before game development became profitable? Well, I've been making games for almost seven years, so I guess that's how long. But really, it's I've only focused on trying to make it profitable in the past few months by releasing a commercial game, releasing a course, and the past year, you know, building up a YouTube channel, which brings in ad revenue and stuff. So... I mean, if I had to do it all over again, I could probably do it in much less time, like a couple of years, I would say. Um, because, yeah, year two was kind of when I really started making a lot of progress, and experimenting and doing cool stuff. So how do you grow your community? YouTube, I think, is the best way to do it right now. Making tutorials is a good way to get new subscribers. And then make sure at the same time you're making videos that aren't tutorials so people come to your channel don't just subscribe for your tutorials they'll expect your other kind of content too and then actually watch it too you know you need to make videos to get subscribers and you need to make videos that get your subscribers interested in your games all right how does a game developer stay afloat without a successful project courses i think in my i mean i've only made one course but it's made so much more money than anything else i've done and i see other smaller game developers on YouTube that don't have hit games but are self-employed, they seem to do a lot of courses, and I'm guessing that's how they make their income. Would you ever work for a AAA company or a AA company, or would you prefer to stay indie? And if you did, what kind of role would you be interested in performing? Uh, not really. Everything I've heard about the games industry, it sounds like an awful place to work, so I'd rather not. But if I had... I would want to own the studio and be completely in charge and have complete creative control over everything. Otherwise, definitely no, would not want to be um, in that scene. Are there any books, podcasts, presentations, etc. on design that you enjoy and or would recommend? Um, videos, Ars Technica is a really cool series where they interview uh, game developers and designers about games they've made and the challenges they ran into with those. So I'd recommend checking that out. It's a really cool series. Uh, as for books... There's a bunch of books I've read that are really cool. Uh, I'll just list them off here because I'm planning to make a full video on those at some point. So um, we have Masters of Doom, which is a story of life story of John Carmack and John Romero, the guys who made Doom, Quake, Wolfstein, uh, Making of Karatika, Making of Prince of Persia. Those are the journals of what's his name, Jordan Mechner, I think, uh, the guy who made Prince of Persia and stuff. And these are his journals as he was making those games back in like the 80s. Um, Hackers by Stephen Levy. It's sort of about the birth and rise of like programmer culture and like young people who make, who code for fun kind of in that whole culture. And then um, there's a whole section on, I think it was Sierra Entertainment was their name. People who made a lot of point and click adventure games back in the day and how they got started in, you know, in the games industry and kicked that off. Uh, another book, CRPG Book Project. It's like this compilation of reviews of like every single rpg ever made it's really cool to read um yeah so that's a good place to start those are some cool books how the hell can you work knowing that there's a huge spider in your room so they asked thou the first devlog there's a tarantula in it basically i was in costa rica visiting friends out in the jungle up in the mountains and i was staying in this like small cabin and it was pretty common for bugs to like crawl in the windows and stuff so while i was recording my screen for the devlog, I noticed the spider crawl in. I was like, oh, I'll just record that. That would be a funny thing to put in there now. For some reason, everyone thinks that that's where I live, and that's what... Um, I just have a spider in my room all the time. I don't mind tarantulas, so it wasn't a big deal for me. What's your favorite game that you've made so far? The Yes or Thou. It's just the most polished and most fun game I've made. It had a lot of work into it. A lot of playtesting, too, which is a new thing 
for me. And I really like how the art came out with the rotoscoped animations, I think were really cool. So yeah, I would say that's my favorite game so far. What engine would you recommend for a beginner to game dev with art experience, but not much coding knowledge? Really just unity. I mean, there's so many resources, so much learning materials available for beginners on it. It's just like any question you could have has been answered hundreds of times over. It's just kind of the best place to start, I think. Um, but if you're just wanting to jump in and you don't want to learn how to program, then something like probably RPG Maker, I guess. It's pretty easy to make games with, though you're going to be limited in what kind of games you can make. And if you just want to make something that looks cool, like something like To the Moon or something, if you've seen that game, then uh, that would be an easy place to get started if you just want to do something story-based. Also, I think there's some visual novel engine. I don't remember what it's called, but you could look into that. What percentage of games that you start creating get finished? Nearly all of them. I am really good at finishing games. It's something I want to be good at and I've worked hard to be good at. I don't start projects unless I'm confident I can finish them. Almost every game I've started, I have finished. Who is that in your profile picture and what's your story? That's the main character for my game, Intersection. I needed a profile picture for my YouTube channel when I was starting to get serious about YouTube. And I had a picture of her um, like lying around from one of my dev logs on TIG Source, I think. And I was just like, oh, I'll just use that. That looks cool. What are some of your favorite games to play? I don't really play games ever. I used to play a fair amount growing up, but once I got into making them, I completely lost interest in playing. It's kind of weird, but yeah. Um, but when I was growing up, I played a lot of StarCraft 1 custom maps and a lot of RuneScape and a fair amount of Minecraft also. Those are the ones that stand out to me the most. What's your favorite aesthetic to develop games with, i.e. pixel or PS1 style minimalistic? Probably flat color 3D. Um, I just really like... If you have a good color scheme, it's just really easy to get something that looks really pretty and stylistic and fancy and stuff. Are you ever going to open up the Art Pack Game Jam to the public? Yes, I um trying to figure out when a good time to do it would be and how soon in advance I should announce it. Maybe in a couple of weeks or something. I don't know. What have been your actual real life jobs so far? I worked as a software developer for a year and a half and that ended December. That's the only real job I've had, I guess. <laughs> what inspired you to code and start a YouTube channel? Graduating college and getting a job. Uh, the real world is not that fun or exciting. And I figured doing this would be way more fun. So yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite programming language? Uh, Python. It's just so easy to do stuff in it. You don't have to mess around with trying to get things to compile or getting a weird, you know, fancy editor to work that takes two hours to load. It's just quick and easy to do stuff in, which is what all I look for in a language or an engine or anything. How to come up with ideas, make a lot of games, come up with an idea, make a small prototype and just keep doing that. The more you do that and, you know, as you make games, you see what's fun. The more you do that, the better you get at coming up with good ideas. I used to, like when I was starting out, I used to obsess with like, I need to come up with fun, cool, original ideas. And I would just think really hard on that. And then just as I made more games, I just got better about it. Now I don't even stress about it. It's like I can come up with a cool idea for a game in no time. Like I just think of something and I come up with a good idea because I've done it so much. I know how to do it. Do you think that biopunk is going to be the next big thing or do you just think it's cool? Um, I just think it's cool, but I also think it will become a big thing probably after deco punk and diesel punk get big. I feel like, um, I feel like those are going to be the next big things and then probably biopunk. I kind of accidentally got into Biopunk. Say I was working on Dallas D and I thought of it more as like a cyberpunk kind of game. And then someone in my first devlog actually commented and was like, oh, wow, it's cool. You don't see many Biopunk games. And I was like, Biopunk, what's that? And uh, so I changed the title of the devlog from how to making a sci-fi RPG in Godot to making a Biopunk RPG in Godot because I figured that would be a more um, interesting title, get people to click more. And then, yeah, that's kind of how I got into Biopunk. It was completely coincidental. A lot of people are asking about coding and art, but what about sound design? Is there a software tool that you recommend for beginners to make sounds for games? Any tips on sound effects? I did a video on sound effects. I'll link here. Um, just basically use Audacity, um, record things on your phone, mess around with it, clean it up in Audacity and watch other videos on sound effects because I don't know a whole lot about sound effects. I feel like the power of good sound design is something undeveloped in games. Nowadays, what are your opinions on the subject? 
sound effects. I mean, they definitely help. Good sound effects makes the game a lot better, but usually it's the last thing people notice in a game. Like the first thing someone's going to notice is the visuals. If you don't have good visuals, nobody's going to want to play your game usually. Um, then they're going to notice gameplay. Does the game actually look fun? Right. And if those two things are met, then they're probably going to want to play your game. Those are your selling points really. But when it comes to sound design, people aren't going to notice that as much because if they see your game, it's probably going to be from a GIF or a trailer, which is going to have music over it. So sound design won't be really that noticeable. They're not going to notice it until they've already bought your game. So that's why people usually don't focus on it, on it as much. Um, and also because you can get pretty good results just using free stock sound effects you find online. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts on it. How do you maintain motivation? If you ever lose motivation, what do you do to get it back? Just say uh, Avery Reed did a video on this where they interviewed a bunch of game developers, myself included, about motivation, and I'll just link that there. You can check out. All right, so that's all the questions I'll answer this time. Um, I'll probably do another one of these eventually. So thanks for sending me questions and stuff.